Heinrich Himmler was a very powerful man in Germany during World War II, head of the vast SS Empire, head of the German police, Ministry of the Interior, and after the July 1944 assassination attempt on Hitler, head of the Reserve Army within Germany. He was to all intents and purposes Hitler's second in command, though officially Reichsmarschall Hermann Goering, the increasingly disgraced and sidelined Air Force chief, occupied the position. For the invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941, the largest military undertaking in history, Hitler required a new headquarters complex in the east. This resulted in the construction of the Wolf's Lair, a massive complex of 80 bunkers and buildings in a swampy forest outside the East Prussian town of Rustenburg in today's Poland. Within the inner security zone was Hitler's enormous above-ground command bunker, progressively strengthened until the walls measured 5 metres thick and the roof 8 metres of reinforced concrete. Alongside Hitler, a few of the inner circle also had bunkers at the Wolf's Lair, primarily Martin Bormann, the powerful head of the Nazi Party Chancellery and the Führer's private secretary, and Reichsmarschall Göring. But Himmler was excluded from the Wolf's Lair, as was Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop. Both men attended meetings at Wolf's Lair all the time, but neither was permitted a bunker at the facility. The official reason was to decentralise the government, as having all the leaders living in one place at the same time was dangerous from a security point of view. The real reason was probably Bormann's machinations against Himmler, the two being in constant competition for power and Hitler's favour. Himmler would have to make other arrangements in East Prussia, but he needed to be near Hitler. As Hitler was to spend over 800 days at the Wolf's Lair during the war directing the titanic struggle on the Eastern Front, Himmler moved fast to create his own field headquarters, resulting in the almost unknown Hochwald, a mini wolf's lair just a few miles from the real thing. The Army High Command, the OKH, was also decentralised away from the wolf's lair and accommodated in a massive bunker complex at Mauerwald. In June and July 1941, Reichsführer SS Himmler lived aboard his special Pullman carriage from his personal train, Heinrich, parked on a modest siding near Grossgarten, now the Polish town of Pozestra. The platform was equipped with five small bunkers come air raid shelters that were not habitable. Because of space considerations, both Himmler and Ribbentrop were forced to work inside their stuffy and uncomfortably hot railway carriages throughout the summer. Ribbentrop, who had a fondness for the finer things in life, decided to find a permanent and considerably more comfortable eastern front base and relocate to Steinort Manor, a large house 8 kilometres northeast of the Wolf's Lair and 10 kilometres from the main OKH headquarters. Himmler then moved into a farmhouse while the Hochwald was being built in a dry pine forest north of Grossgarten. The area was much healthier than the location chosen for Hitler's HQ. It was also more comfortable during the summer and much more attractive than the breezeless, fetid swamp of the Wolf's Lair. The official name of the complex was SS Feldkommandostelle Hochwald and it was located 27 kilometers east of the Wolf's Lair, a 30-minute drive by armoured Mercedes limousine. Construction work resulted in five large Type B reinforced bunkers, brick-built guardhouses, an underground garage, and later some wooden barrack-type buildings. The standard Type B shelter had reinforced concrete walls and a two-metre-thick concrete roof, with two entrances fitted with armoured doors and firing ports. Each contained small working rooms with lighting and a ventilation system. A sixth bunker, Himmler's shelter, stood at the centre of Hochwald and was a specially reinforced Type B bunker. In late 1943 or early 44, an outer reinforced concrete jacket was added to the bunker, sunk into the ground around the building to a depth of 9 metres. This bunker survives reasonably intact 
and measures 21.4 meters long, 19.3 meters wide, and 8.4 meters tall, with two entrances. The interior was narrow and had two small rooms due to the massive thicknesses of the walls and ceiling. As we can see from this plan of Hochwald, Himmler's bunker, labelled 1, was in the middle of the facility. Buildings 2 to 6 are the standard Type B bunkers, and buildings 7 to 9 brick-built guardhouses for Himmler's protection details. Not marked on this plan was a collection of 20 unarmoured white wooden chalet buildings used for meetings, accommodation, meals and leisure. As can be seen by this plan, Hochwald was surrounded by security fences and minefields, and the complex was carefully guarded. Himmler was protected by two units at all times. The first he shared in common with all other Nazi leaders, including Hitler. Himmler's close protection officers were a detachment of 20 or so from the Reich Sicherheitsdienst, the RSD, a special SS bodyguard unit primarily tasked with Hitler's protection. Large-scale guarding of Himmler when he was moving and at his various headquarters and residences was performed by a special unit from the German Order Police, this organisation being under Himmler's control. The eagle-eyed among you will notice in this photograph that among the SS officers with Himmler is an order police officer, second from left, from his motorised escort. Ordnungspolizeibataillon Steiermark was 600 men strong and highly mobile, divided into three guard companies and an escort protection squadron. Not all of the order police battalion was with Himmler at the Hochwald. Instead, part of a guard company and the escort squadron equipped with field cars, trucks and motorcycles to escort Himmler's cars and secure the perimeter of the HQ. Confusingly, Himmler's SS bodyguard unit, the Begleit Battalion der Reichsführer SS, 3,000 men strong, was largely absent, having been volunteered by Himmler for frontline service, becoming part of the 16th Waffen-SS Panzergrenadier Division Reichsführer SS. A small number of officers and men from this unit remained with Himmler as liaison, servants and aides. Himmler's personal staff when he was at Hochwald was quite small. Though the main characters changed due to combat and staff rotations, Himmler's main aides later in the war were SS Standartenführer Rudolf Brandt, his personal administration officer, Gruppenführer Dr. Karl Gebhardt, Himmler's personal physician, Obersturmbannführer Werner Grotmann and Sturmbannführer Heinz Macher, his two principal aides de camp, SS Obergruppenführer Maximilian von Herf, chief of Himmler's personal staff, and Felix Kirsten, his physical therapist. There were also various SS cooks, valets, waiters, a barber, stenographers, and signal clerks. In total, some 48 support staff worked at Hochwald, plus the security and guard details. A small-scale operation compared to the Wolf's Lair, where 2,000 people worked daily. The location of Hochwald placed Himmler close to all of the important government and military headquarters of the Eastern Front. Hitler was only a 30-minute drive away. And Himmler's personal armoured train, later in the war codenamed Steiermark, was parked under camouflage netting at nearby Grossgarten. Himmler could travel by train to the wolf's lair if he so chose. If he drove, his armoured Mercedes and escort vehicles would pass by Ribbentrop's headquarters at Steinort Manor. Then the Mauerwald OKH headquarters complex. And also the small bunker complex of Dr. Hans Lammers, chief of the Reich Chancellery at Rosengarten, before reaching the wolf's lair. Because of Himmler's many responsibilities, he was often away from Hochwald, but the complex was fully operational from 1941 through to the 20th of November 1944, when the approach of the Soviet Red Army caused its evacuation along with the wolf's lair and other nearby headquarters. On Himmler's order, army engineers blew up much of the complex on the 14th of January 1945, 
But though badly damaged and cracked by the force of the detonations, Himmler's bunker at Hochwald, due to its massively thick walls and roof, has survived to the present day in almost intact condition. It remains an under-researched and mysterious headquarters, overshadowed by the more famous Wolf's Lair. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. For some really great audio stories, please visit my new channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Details below. You can also support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.